So I said there was uh, one small part which was not completed, so we can do that. I asked you to do it as a homework. So I don't know if you tried it or not. Okay, let me connect my. Okay, let's see. So when you're preparing for the exams, I hope the handbook and your class notes are helpful. Is that correct? Are you finding it useful or not? Any feedback? Yes, sir, it's useful. Useful, yes, okay. Useful, sir. Okay, very good. As I said, you know, every year I try to keep on improving the material okay, so that I may have, you know, skipped some of the derivations here, for example, so I'll be adding it. Okay. So every year I try to improve. So if you see some errors or anything like that, you can let me know so we can correct it in the future editions. And as I told you, it's available in Amazon also. So if any of your friends are looking for some help, you can let them know. Okay. So it's available for sale. Um, let's see. Okay, in the last class we talked about degrees of freedom, right? So we talked about something like you know moving in x-axis. So it's like x-axis, y-axis, and then z-axis, right? So three translatory motion, and then I showed you with the dumbbell, dumbbell shape. So either you can rotate it like this or you can rotate it from this location like this right or you can rotate it from the top but if you rotate it from the side like this the radius is very small so that's why we said for diatomic molecules we don't consider this one of the axes okay that means you'll be taking only two degrees of freedom for diatomic for monoatomic you'll be taking only three degrees of freedom so what is DOF? Three degrees of freedom. Okay, so it can move in three degrees. For diatomic, it will be three degrees of freedom in linear motion and two degrees of freedom in the rotation motion, which means the total will be five degrees of freedom. So if I consider only the monoatomic molecule, right? We are not considering the rotation motion because the radius is very small. So if I am spinning it this way, since the radius is small, the moment of inertia can be very small. So what we do is, we do a very simple derivation, very, very easy. So for monoatomic E total, energy total is equal to E translatory plus E rotation plus E vibration. I said there is only translation, translatory motion, right? There is no rotation motion, or we are not considering the vibration motion. In that case, it will be only three degrees of freedom. This will be zero and this will be zero. What is law of equipartition of energy? Every degree of freedom will get half kBT. Okay. We don't know how it comes, it's taken without proof. Okay. So if you take physics in college, you'll be studying the proofs. So that means I'm going to say for one degree of freedom, I'm I'll be getting half kBT of energy. And that is what is based on law of equipartition of energy. So each 
degree of freedom will get the same amount of energy. So that means the total energy will be three into this. Much. So over here, F is F is equal to three. F is equal to three. Now the center thing is degree. Degree of, of degree of freedom. Is that equal to three? Yeah, that's correct. Because we are considering x, y, z moments. So that means I am considering only three degrees of freedom. So each degree of freedom has this much energy according to law of equal partition. Are you following? Yes, sir. So if one energy mode is going to have half kbt, two will be having two into this much, three will be having three into this much. Suppose if I had considered two rotational, then I would have taken two here. So two plus three, it will be five. So five into half kb. That's what you'll be doing for the diatom. So let's finish this monoatomic first. So this is nothing but three by two kbt. I told you KB is nothing but R by N. So R by N A. So so this is for one. I told you KB is per molecule. So this is per molecule. If I divide by Avogadro's number, right? So what will happen is I'll be getting the value for one mole. So listen carefully, a bit confusing. So E total for one molecule per molecule. So if I want it for one mole, for one mole, I need to multiply by Avogadro's number. So that means U for one more. Once U stands for the energy. So 3 by 2 KBT into NA. Why? This is 6.02 into 10 power 20. So NA NA cancels. So what I get is T by two RT. Okay, this is what is your U. So that means first you find the energy per mole molecule, then you find the energy per mole. Okay, so this is again I'm telling you again and again, but no, it's very confusing. So that's why I'm saying this. So this is whenever you see KB, it will be for per molecule. Whenever you see R, R is joule per mole per Kelvin, which means this is per mole. Okay, so make a proper note. Whenever you see KB, it is per molecule. Whenever you see R, it is per mole. Okay, very confusing. Somewhere in your previous thermodynamics chapter, somewhere, right? We studied it as CV is equal to delta u by delta t. So if you don't remember, I think I remember something like q is equal to mc delta t. This is your energy, right? So this comes on this side. So this is for mass based. Suppose if I write it for mole based, it will be written as q is equal to nu into cv into delta t. This is the energy, so the energy comes can be written as delta q and delta t here is equal to mu into cv. What is mu? Number of moles. So here we are talking about one mole. Right? Q 
here in that in that chapter we used energy as q right so we are calling the internal energy as u here constant process constant volume process if you remember q minus w is equal to delta e or delta u okay. what did we say constant volume process anybody constant volume is work done is hmm? work done is p into delta v so if delta v is zero work done is also zero so it means q is equal to delta u so this is what we derived in the previous chapter so delta q can be written as delta u you see i'm showing it as a side note okay so you have to understand that this is completely coming from the previous chapter okay from this this is for one mode so it means i can do it So that means C V is nothing but delta U by delta T. So that means if I want C V, right? What is C V? Specific heat capacity at constant volume. So take it down. If you have forgotten it, specific heat capacity at constant volume. so what does this mean in differentiation terms i'm i'm differentiating with respect to t so that means cv will become as t by 2 r again unfortunately you know again i say always tell you mathematics problem right so since you are not studied differentiation you may find it confusing right so whenever you differentiate with respect to delta t right this is your constant so that constant term will be coming here. or in other words if that is confusing i can write this as delta u is equal to 3 by 2 r is a constant delta t so when the delta t comes on this side this will become 3 by 2 r so delta u by delta t so if differentiation is confusing write it down properly you can write it like this 3 by 2 any questions only the first one is going to be slightly confusing okay once you are convinced with this all the other table is going to be very very easy so cv is equal to 3 by 2 r you studied something called cp minus cv is equal to r what is this relationship called nobody remembers mayers relation so it means cp minus cv so if i want cp i can write it as cv plus r what is cv 3 by 2 r plus r so that would be 5 by 2 r so what is gamma cp by cv What is CP? Pi by two R. What is CV? Three by two R. So R R cancels, two two cancels, so I'll be getting pi by three. Pi by three is approximately one point six seven. So this is the specific heat capacity ratio for monoatomic molecules. So remember, go back to the starting point. We are talking about monoatomic molecules. something like helium for example carbon helium something find out this find out this per mole from per molecule you find out per mole after per mole use your thermodynamics knowledge definitely you know i agree that definitely it's not going to be easy okay when you say read this probably some of you are thinking sir where did we study this okay it's already there in the thermodynamics so go back and study this so <clears throat> so when you differentiate del u by del t i will be getting cv 
So by that way only I am getting C by two R. Once I know CV, I can find CP. Once I know CP by CV, right? That will give me the gap. Very very simple. So now I am going to do it for the diet diatomic gas. Very very simple. Okay, very very quick. So if you have any issues, you can stop me. So E total is equal to E translatory plus E rotation E vibration. E translational, we said there are three degrees of freedom. E rotational, I told you many times for diatomic dumbbell, dumbbell shaped molecule like this, right? You can spin it like this. You can spin it like this. Sorry, I can spin it like this also. Well, this radius is very, very small compared to this radius. So we say that this moment of inertia is very small. So this is signal. That means I'll be getting only two degrees of freedom. For you know, of course, sometimes you'll be considering vibrational mode, right? We'll come to that later. So in this case, like, you know, I'm assuming there is no vibration, which means I have three degrees of freedom. According to law of equipartition of energy, without proof. We studied that half kbt. So each degree will give get an energy of half kbt. That means if I have three degrees of freedom, did I make a mistake here? Everyone sleeping? So this is five. That means I'll be getting five by two kbt. This is per molecule. How do I convert it to per mole? So U per mole. So U is equal to pi by two KBT into NA. So again, I'm not going to write this. Okay, I can quickly write it. Yeah, some of you are confused. R by NA into NA. NA, NA cancels, so I'll be getting RT. You see the pattern repeats exactly the same way. Now there you got 3 by 2 RT, here I'm getting 5 by 2 RT. So what is this per mole? Then what should I do? I need to find CV. What is CV? From my thermodynamics knowledge, we should know del, del U by delta T. Every time you don't have to repeat, you know, repeat this or you don't have to derive this, okay, this you have to remember. That means if I differentiate this, I'll be getting only this constant. From Mayer's relation, I know CP minus CV is equal to R. So CP is equal to CV plus R. 5 by 2 plus 1 will give me 7 by 2. So I want to find gamma specific heat capacity ratio. So gamma is equal to again writing gamma is tricky. Okay, so write it like this. This looks like a Y. So gamma is equal to Cp by C. So Cp is 7 by 2 R. Cv is 5 by 2 R. That means I'll be getting 7 by 5. 7 by 5, 1 times 1.20. 1. So 20, 24. So approximately, you know, diatomic gases, for example, oxygen, nitrogen, air, even air is a mixture of oxygen, nitrogen, which means it's diatomic. So for all these things, I'll be using 1.4, even hydrogen. Okay. So for all these things, gamma, I'll be using 1.4 because it is diatomic. 
any question i showed you for the monoatomic now i quickly derive it for the diatomic okay once you understood the first box you will understand the later boxes it's very very simple okay that's why i have shown it as i told you in the last class something which is given in some three or four pages i just summarized in one single table so if you understand this one you can understand all the others in triatomic non linear right something like water molecule so you can imagine that it is 3 degrees of freedom why 3 degrees of freedom well you can say that rotational motion is also there so you have one atom here you have one atom here in the dumbbell shaped i showed only this one but suppose if there was one more molecule sitting here then you can rotate along this axis you can rotate along this axis you can rotate along this axis also why now this radius is very large that means this is also significant so 3 degrees of rotation motion Three degrees of translating motion. So after that, the same story. So I'll be getting six. So I'll be getting six into one by two half kBT, right? Which means I'll be getting three kBT. I'm not going to write the entire thing, so you have to try it yourself. Three by two kBT will become three RT because when you convert it to per mole, you'll be getting U. So CV it will become three R, CP it will become three R plus R, which means four R. So gamma will become CP by CV, four by three, which is one point three. So it's exactly the same method. Okay, so you can follow it and get the answers. Everyone following this? Anybody finding this difficult? I think I showed you all the steps already. Can also refer to this. Okay, so I've shown all the steps. So here, I think I missed some of the steps over here. So this is where you have to take down the notes properly. Look at this. Now I think you don't have any problem with monoatomic, diatomic, and triatomic. Everyone okay with this? Yes, no. Everyone. Yes, sir. Yes, no issues. Okay. Very good. Now let's consider diatomic with one vibration mode. What does that mean? Same like this one, but suppose if we consider one degree of freedom. Here alone, I'll not be putting half kBT. I will be putting kBT. This is a bit confusing. I talked about this in the last class, so maybe you don't remember it. So I will say that one more time. Within one mode of vibration, right? You have. one kinetic energy vibration right one mode of one mode which is kinetic energy of vibration and another one is potential energy of the vibration what does that mean okay very confusing so please listen carefully so when the molecule is kind of vibrating back and forth like this imagine something like a spring so the spring is kind of going up and down the so same thing the molecule is kind of Going up and down. Okay, so when it is compressing, it is potential energy. Half k y square. Remember, we derived this in the sixth chapter. That means this displacement is your y when okay. it is compressed. So half k y square. K is the spring constant. Similarly, kinetic energy it is half mv square. But the molecule, you know, we are not talking about the flying molecules. We are talking about the vibrating one, which means half m. It's displacement. How quickly this displacement is happening? So that is why it is dy by dt. Of course. So this mode will get one half kBT. this mode will get another half kbt but remember both are vibration mode okay so that means in vibration mode you have two half kbts okay 
again i'm just repeating it you now whatever i did in the last class i'm just repeating it. so one vibration mode is equal to one kinetic energy mode okay and then one potential energy vibration means i'll be getting half kbt for this mode then half kbt for this mode that means one vibration mode will not have half kbt it will be having one kbt so that means if you consider diatomic diatomic with one vibration mode i will say e total is equal to e translatory e rotation then e vibration here i am considering 3 degrees of freedom here i am saying there are 3 degrees of Three or two, okay. So diatomic, right? So diatomic means it's not three; it's two. And then we are assuming one degree of freedom for vibration. What it means is it's kind of vibrating in one single direction. It's not vibrating in many, many modes. Again, how do I know that? It'll, well, it depends upon the situation, right? So depending upon different situations, you can assume. One degree of freedom, two degree of freedom, something like that, depending upon the context. That means three plus two plus one, I will be getting six. After that, you are going to get the same thing what you did in the previous one. So six half kbt. That will give me three kbt. You see, I am just going very fast because it's just a repeating thing. It's very boring if I do it, you know, very slow. So I told you to become three R, right? Three R T. C V will become T will go away. So that means C P will become C P plus C V plus one R, which means it will become four R. So gamma will be. CP by CV, so we call it. This is what is given in this fourth table. Okay, I think I made a mistake. Nobody corrected me. So I said one degree of freedom gives you only one kbt, right? So it's not half kbt. So I made a mistake here. So so for 3 by 3 plus 2 it will be 5 degrees of freedom plus 1 degree of vibration nobody check this this will become 5 half kb but within one degree of vibration i told you there are two vibrations one is sorry two modes one is kinetic and one is potential which means half plus half it will become one kbt okay. which means 5 by 2 plus 1 will give me 7 by 2 this is c so u would become 7 by 2 r so cv would be 7 by 2 r cp would be plus 1 which means 2 9 by 2 r gamma is cp by cv so 9 by 7 so 1.2 is that right 1.2 some 1.28 it's all <clears throat> 
any questions any doubts last one i am not going to do it okay you are going to do it yourself only thing you know it's more like algebraic thing so instead of 3 here and 3 here right you have instead of 1 degree or 2 degree so if you are wondering sir why did you take it as 1 why can't you have two degrees of vibration mode why can't you have three degrees of you know, vibration mode? yes you can have it that's why you can you know we are putting it as here so this will become 6 by 2 and here you see triatomic which means three degrees of freedom <coughs> this is set so what are <clears throat> so here since you have 3 degrees 3, 3 plus 3 it will become 6 6 into half kbt plus f into kbt why 1 degree will have kbt so f degrees will have f into kbt so 3 3 plus f into rt 3 plus f into r plus 1 will give me 4 plus f okay. so we'll be getting 3 plus f into r plus r which means i can write it as 4 plus f Got. So gamma is equal to Cp by Cv. So 4 plus f divided by 3 plus f. Anyone following this table? I'm sure definitely will have one question in your exam based on this. If you have time to theory for your exam. Yes, no. <clears throat> Let's do the last part. Understood, sir. Okay, very good. Yes, sir. this one is coming only for your entrance exams okay so for now you can skip it you don't have to worry about this one okay. only the first part you'll be using these things i don't think you'll be using this one everything is there then we talked about graham's law of diffusion we derived this dalton's law of partial pressures we derived it okay Let's see, there is something called mean free path. Now let's see. The derivation given here, I don't think I given all the steps. So maybe. Mean free path, number of molecules close to a molecule that can collide in time and entropy. Okay, so that will give me. It will be given by how many times? Times. So I can do inference. Okay. So area is pi b square. Okay. Area is pi b square. Okay, so this is pi b square. Then how many number of molecules? So n is the This is the um, number of molecules in a you know, unit volume, right? So that means m, you know, okay, can be square. Velocity into delta time. So velocity into time will give me distance. So the distance traveled in delta time. So that means distance into area will give me volume. Okay, so let's talk about this. If I say one molecule is kind of moving in this direction, right? Imagine that if if there is a molecule here, if there is a molecule here, 
if there is a molecule here, right? So this will be hitting this, this will be hitting this, this will be hitting this. So how long will it hit? So it has to be either within this D or within this D. So suppose if I'm redrawing this. So this diameter of the molecule, I'm going to take it as D. This is also another molecule. So suppose if I take this distance, this center to center distance, this will also be D. See if this makes sense, because this is D by two, this is D by two, which means this will be D. So as this molecule is moving, right, it might be hitting this molecule, right? Listen carefully, very, very easy, very, very confusing. Suppose if this molecule, you know, if there is a molecule slightly outside this, outside this line, will this molecule A, B, C, A might be slightly hitting the B, but what about C, will it hit or not? This molecule is moving here. As this is going in this line, will it hit this molecule or not? That's such a difficult question. Nobody says the answer. Ankita, what do you think? This molecule is slightly away here. So it's, what do you think? Will it hit or not? I don't think so. Yeah, you don't think it will be hitting. Yeah, that's the answer I'm expecting. So as long as it is inside this, right, inside this distance D, these molecules. So suppose if there is a molecule here, what will happen? This will definitely go and hit this. When it is here, it will not hit. because the distance between this center and this distance, this center, right? It's more than D by two, sorry, D. Because this distance we call it as D. So now this distance is more than D, why? Because there is a small gap here, okay? Which means it's slightly farther. Maybe I should draw this C properly. So this is the center. So from this center to this center, right? So this is a molecule which I'm talking about. So from this center to this center is greater than D. <clears throat> so what we are going to say is when the molecule is moving, I'm interested in only in this D. So similar to this, the same situation might happen on this side also. So what I'm talking about here is, you know, if you extend this line, it's not like a linear thing, it's a circular thing. So there is the area here covered by this. So this area will be pi d square. Why? Because this radius is d. I'm here too. Okay, I think I made a mistake here. It should be shown. This line. The diagram is a bit confusing, so let me try it one more time. So 
So now if I consider this center, this center, this distance is equal to D. So anything within this region anything in this circular region right the area will be pi d square why pi d square this is the radius so pi radius square anybody confused so you said it's a diameter of the particle now you are saying pi d square because this is d by 2, this is d by 2. So that means this distance is d. And that is your radius, so pi r square. So the same like you, I take pi r square. So in a given time delta t, let's say it's moving this much distance. So it's moving with the velocity v. That means this distance is velocity into delta t. So, what is the volume covered by this region? Yeah, unfortunately, the diagram is not good in your textbook. So, take down the diagram properly. So, this is the volume through which this molecule is going, which means it will be hitting some of the molecules nearby. How many molecules do you have in this volume? You know that there is something called number density. What is number density? N is equal to number of molecules divided by the volume. So that means area is equal to pi d square. Volume, the molecule is passing through is pi d squared into length. But what is length is velocity into delta t. Delta t is the time interval. It can be one second, it can be two seconds, it can be thousand seconds, right? Whatever you are considering. Pi d squared into delta t. Sorry, v into delta t. Total number of molecules. Total number of molecules in in this volume. Is equal to how do I know that? Well, you see, this is total number of molecules. So how do I get total number of molecules? I have to multiply the volume with n. So take it down properly. This is total number of molecules. So that means I need to multiply n into volume. It's coming from this definition. <clears throat> the textbook, this derivation is very, very confusing. So take down the notes properly. So n into what is volume? This one, pi d square, v into delta t. Okay, so that's the important milestone. How many molecules are there? So, same this one. So, let me copy this space. Anybody still copying? Can you change? If the molecule, listen carefully, very confusing. If the molecule 
hits five molecules in its path. What did we calculate here? Total number of molecules in this volume that gets hit. That gets hit by the one by the moving molecule. In reality, all the molecules are moving, but I'm just considering the central molecule which is moving and you know hitting the other one. If the molecule hits five molecules in its path in a time delta t, in a time ten seconds, a time between collision, or you can say average time. Average time between collision. So totally, I have taken ten seconds. In ten seconds, it hits five molecules, which means it will be ten divided by five. It means two seconds per molecule, or you can say two seconds per collision. Again, this is just an example to make it easy for you to understand. Okay, in reality, you know, generally our brains will work with numbers very well. Okay. But if I say it in the algebraic form, it might be confusing for you. So that's why I'm just first giving you the numbers. Every, every for everyone, is this making sense or not? Anybody confused? Yes. No. Yes. Sir. Okay. So average time between collisions is nothing but the time interval. What is the time interval? In this example, I took it as 10 seconds divided by what is this total number of molecules? Suppose if I asked you how many collisions are there, okay, we'll come to that later. So it means total number of molecules we found it as n pi d squared v delta t. So it means delta t divided by n into area pi d square into v into delta t. Is that right? Then pi d square v into delta t. Yeah. Now I am going to say that delta t delta t cancels. The book I think they used average velocity, so put a bar here. It means average velocity because after hitting, it might keep changing the velocity slightly. One molecule is here, another molecule is here. So let's say this goes and hits this. Let's say it takes time t. So the distance, distance between two collisions. d is equal to this distance is d the time taken is t so the distance between two collisions can be written as distance can be written as velocity into time 
by velocity is equal to distance by time. So I am bringing the time on this side. So what I am trying to do, I am just average time between collisions is found as this much. So the time between collision here it is taken as t, which means in place of t I can substitute this. So mean distance of free path. What do you mean by free path? Without hitting, right? So some other molecule is going to come this way, but without hitting, you know, what is the distance it will travel without hitting? That is what is called mean distance of free path. Distance traveled by a molecule before. It gets hit by a man. That's the meaning of mean distance of three path. So velocity average into t. Time is the time between two collisions. So it means n pi d square I have to divide. Now the V and V will cancel. So what is left is 1 by n pi d square. So this mean free mean distance of free path is taken as i. So that's the derivation is all about. So they may ask you to derive the mean distance of free path. The answer is the center thing which we discussed. Other, other molecules are not stationary. They are also Moving. Okay. So here we assume that other molecules are not moving, right? Only this molecule is moving. So more exact treatment. Will give a result L is equal to same thing, only thing there will be a root two here. Again, that, that proof is you know outside the scope of this book or your textbook. So they simply said that okay, you know, this is a derivation, but you know, a more accurate derivation will give you one by root two in the Any questions? Let me say this one more time quickly. Okay. So what did we study? <clears throat> one molecule, no. One molecule is you know, flying through the gas, right? The other molecules are there. But it will be, it will not be hitting a molecule here, it will be hitting only the molecules which are in this region. That means we are calculating the area of the circle of influence. And then we are multiplying pi d squared with the length. Length is velocity into time. And then we are multiplying by the number of, sorry, number density, which is number of molecules by volume. If I want the total number of molecules, multiply by the volume into n. That's what we have done so far. 
okay n into pi d square v into beta so that's the first part the second part is this is a part which might be slightly confusing okay so five molecules it is sitting five molecules in 10 seconds which means the average time between collisions is 2 seconds per molecule or you can say 2 seconds per collision so average time between collision can be written as a formula take the time and divide by the number of molecules that will give me average time between collisions do the math delta t delta t cancels and then i want i am interested in finding the time between two collisions so what sorry here we found the time between collisions i am interested in finding the mean distance between the two collisions okay mean free path which means i need to multiply the velocity into time time between two collisions this is the time between two collisions velocity into time velocity velocity cancels i get n pi d squared more accurate derivation will give you 1 by root 2 if you take physics in college any questions is this making sense derivations okay again as i told you whatever is taught in your school which your chapter or which your derivations are there study them okay others also you might be studying okay, depending upon your school you know what they are going to do you can study it according okay let's see what is can i Okay, so we've completed this. You see, I given only the final answers and pi d square we need to write out in data positions. Actually, you know, you don't need this second line. Okay, you can directly go to time between the positions. Okay, so that's why we're getting time divided by this one. So delta t delta t cancels with this. After that, it follows the same. This is a simple thing. Predicting CV for solids using law of equipartition of energy. Solids, so there is no movement, right? So molecules are moving; it's not rotating, but it is vibrating over time. That means three degrees of vibration mode is considered. So CV, we said it is three de three degrees of freedom means it will be three into R. Okay, based on this, you will get three by three into. Will you get three into half kBT or will you get three into kBT? Anybody for vibration mode? I'm sleeping, I think. So when you consider solids, right? The molecules are sitting in a crystal lattice like this, which means it's not going to move. It's not going to be moving around. It is kind of vibrating this direction, or it can be vibrating this direction, or it can be vibrating this direction. Which means they have three degrees of vibration. So for one vibration mode, it is one kBT, not half kBT. That means for three degrees of freedom, I have to multiply by three into kBT. Okay, which means you will be getting this is your E, and then U will be getting as three R T. Okay. CV, 
will be getting a tick if you are considering it as B. So, C is equal to 3R. So, since we are talking about, you know, predicting the CV value for water, okay. So, the topic here is predicting the CV value for water. Okay. So, CV is equal to 3R. Since in a water you have water molecule, you have H2O. So three atoms are there. So what they have done is this is for one of the atoms. So I think we have identified the three atoms. Three atoms. Three atoms. This is a bit confusing. Why is it per multiplication by D? This is already per mole, so per mole of what? So, again, if you are wondering, sir, you said here you are written water and here you are saying solid. Well, you are assuming that water is something you know, like ice. In the case of ice, right, you can assume it to be something like a solid. So we are kind of assuming, right? So that's why it's called predicting, right? So it's not exact calculation, it's just an estimation. Okay, this I look into it. Okay, why is there is multiplication of three atoms? Because I thought this is already for per molecule, sorry, per mole. So this is per molecule. So we are talking about triatomic here. So triatomic means we say for triatomic. So for triatomic gas, triatomic. So it's three degrees of freedom. So three K meter. For triatomic itself, you will be getting 3R. So I'm not sure why they Okay, I will double check this. Okay. So for now, take it down as 3R into, you know, for three atoms, they have multiplied by three. But to me, it appears that, you know, this is already considering all this, you know, because it's triatomic. Triatomic only, you know, we are considering three degrees of freedom. Maybe since it is solids, I'll take it like this. So it will be 9 into R. So this I will double check it. Okay. So. R is 8.314 joule per mole per kilo. So 9 into 8, this is per mole. So you can do the math, you should be getting 4.2 joule per gram per kg. So if I want it for per, per gram, CV can be written as 9 into 8.314 joule. One mole can be written as Avogadro's number. So, so many atoms, molecules. 
so six point zero two into ten power two fifty. So my unique items. I think you have to use the eighteen grams concept here. So eighteen grams corresponds to one mole of water. Why eighteen plus H two O? So this is two plus sixteen. So that's what you see in eighteen grams. So one mole is equal to eighteen grams. So I think I will be dividing it by eighteen grams. So this and this will cancel to two. Eight by two will give me four point one something. So four point one eight zero four point one five. So this is close to four point two joules per gram per kelvin. So somewhere I told you. This is what is called the specific heat capacity of water. What does that mean? How much energy? So it has. You have to give 4.2 joules for one gram of water to raise it by one degree Celsius. That means you are basically predicting the CV value of water using this principles. But again, as I said, this bit is confusing. Okay, why I took, why I have taken three atoms. Okay, so bit confusing. Okay, so if you have any doubts, feel free to stay back and help you. So only the three atoms part is kind of confusing, but all the other things I hope you are okay. Okay, so we finished this table. We finished this mean pre path. Then we finished this predicting the CV value, right? This I'm going to leave it as a homework. Cp minus Cv is equal to R. So you know what is gamma. So based on that, try doing this. Okay. So try finding Cp in terms of gamma. If you're wondering what is this, okay, I'll give you a small idea. You can try to yourself. This is for mixtures. Okay, for some numericals, you will need this help. Okay, we'll talk about this in the numericals. So I have Cp minus Cv is equal to R. So CP is so Sanjeev. If you have doubts, if you want, you can stay back, or you can come back on Wednesday. Sir, on Wednesday, from what time will be available? After five, will be available. Even before, I will be available. Now you can check with me. Thank you. CP minus CV is equal to R. So we know that gamma is equal to CP by CV. So if I don't like CV, I can replace CV in terms of gamma by CP. So CV can be written as CP by gamma. Hmm. To take the CP commonly out, I'll be getting gamma minus one divided by gamma is equal to R. CP is equal to gamma divided by gamma minus one. So basically, your elimination method in your mathematics. So this is one equation. This is another equation. So I am eliminating the CV and I am calculating the CP. Similarly, find out CV in terms of this and do the same thing. You will get this answer. Okay. So take it as a homework. So I am not going to do it. <clears throat> so just follow the elimination.
Okay, that's all. So kinetic theory is over. Okay, all the theory parts, everything is completed for you. Okay, if you have any doubts, any difficulties, you can always let me know. Okay. So next class we'll do some numericals. Okay, if you have any specific numericals to be done, you can send it to me before the class. Okay. And I say before the class, at least you know, two, three hours before. Okay, if you send it just before the class, you know, I may not be able to you know, show it up here in the lab. So. Okay, so thank you all. If you have any doubts, stay back. So good luck for your exams. Do well. And for others, I can keep doing some numericals so we can stay, you know, you can come for the next classes also. Okay. So chemistry, I think uh, chemistry sir said, you know, most of you, your exams are getting, you know, already started. So chemistry class may not be there. Okay, thank you all. If you have any doubts, stay back. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir.